In this video I'm going to show if you're using IRR only some issues you can have. In addition, I'm going to show us another issue uh, when we have multiple IRRs. So let's first go ahead and calculate. Uh, I'm not going to emphasize on the calculation, but I will calculate these numbers. Now I'm going to start looking at these two projects, Project A and Project B. And the first calculation I'm going to make is I'm going to calculate the IRR by simply hitting equals IRR and then put my parentheses here. I'm going to grab uh, 0 through the fourth cash flow, close it, hit return. Now I have the rate by which uh, the NPV is 0. So at 14.41 the NPV is 0. We're also making some other assumptions here in a moment. The cost of capital is 10%. I'm dealing with normal cash flows, which means you've got one coming in and uh, or one going out, and the difference are coming in. And we will have a positive NPV. Have to have those conditions. So I'm going to grab the fill handle here and calculate the next one. Now, if that's all I did on this project uh, or this this uh, calculations for these projects, I would pick project A uh, because it has a higher IRR. Now let's go ahead and calculate the NPV by doing the same NPV. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the cost of capital right here. Now um, to do an absolute cell reference I'm going to hit a dollar sign here so it holds the B and then I'm going to put another one here so it holds the 11 and hit return and now if you look I can only start at value 1. I can't start at value 0 like I did with IRR so it's only going to give me the NPV uh, of positive cash flows so I hit return so I'll uh, do the same thing for B now uh, for the second project B. These are not true, so I have to get the true by subtracting by subtracting this number from it. So I'm just going to put this and to subtract it, I'm going to add it because it's already negative. So enter. So now I'm going to get the true NPV. Calculate, uh, grab the fill handle, pull down. And now we take a look. We a moment ago decided that 1441 was the best decision for us, but now we have uh, NPV of less than 1441. Uh, so you see now we would probably choose, since the true NPV is higher here, we would choose Project B instead of Project A. Now in order to see some other interesting issues we refer to as a, we'll calculate a crossover rate. Uh, so I'm going to grab the fill handle and pull down. Now I've just ca calculated the crossover rate by simply finding the difference between the two projects. These are the differences difference between these two projects and then I found the IRR of the differences and that's the crossover rate. So let's see if I can draw a graph or a graphic representation of it. Um, one thing I would like to say uh, really quick is generally, well let me just draw the graph first. Let's hear this graph and I'll go to some uh, and this axis here, the y-axis, I'm going to put NPV and this x-axis down here I'm going to put the cost of capital. Of cap. Let's put cap here. Um, and I'm also going to look at, uh, of course, this is zero. This is where that number is zero, and this is where this is zero, right here, zero. So now I'm going to look at where it crosses the NPV. Well, it crosses the NPV at zero here. Now, how did I do that? Well, simply all I did was uh, at zero, these would be positive cash flows, this would be the negative cash flow, so all I did was uh, added all these up and subtracted that one and I got 5500 so project A would cross here at 5500 at zero. Uh, it, now again at 1441 at 1441 the NPV would be zero so at 1441 the NPV was zero so if this is the, right here let me draw that line and it crosses here and that's 1441 and that is project A. Now with project B, project B it crosses here at 950 and it crosses down here at 0 at 1271. So now we have this little point here that's sometimes referred to as your crossover point and we've already calculated the crossover point here in this case is 1044. And in essence what it's kind of saying here is that there's no conflict on this side as long as the cost of capital is greater than 1044, but once the cost of capital is less than 1044, like we saw here, we see an issue. And here's where our issue lies. Um, generally, this happens with the timing. If you take a look at the timing of cash flows, sometimes the scale 
of cash flows and sometimes even the life, the useful life of the cash flow. You have different lives. Uh, those are three issues. You'll see this. So ba basically, I'm going to put a little rule over here. Number one, uh, when we make these decisions, we generally like to make it based upon this one. So in this case, uh, as long as the uh, rates are less than 10, uh, the less than 1044, I would probably choose the NPV. Uh, I use sometimes example that if a student walked into a class and gave the teacher a dollar and the teacher then handed the student two dollars, or they could choose this one. They walk in and give the teacher twenty dollars and then walk out and the teacher gives them twenty-five. Well, if you take a look at it, this one here, they doubled their money, one divided by one or hundred percent return. And here they made a five dollar investment on a twenty dollar, so they didn't double their money, they made a twenty percent return. But this one they made five and that one they made one. So generally we usually use NPVs when we're dealing with mutually exclusive uh, projects in which this is mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means that I can pick one or the other. In this case, uh, I'm going to pick uh, the higher NPV. In this case, it's going to be project B. So let's look at a, another issue. Uh, second issue here, what if we have uh, multiple IRRs. Basically, this is what we have up top. This one here, we could use the same thing here. We wouldn't have it in multiple. But if we have cash flows, non-normal cash flows, what you're in essence going to have a graph that look like this. You're going to cross the line twice, a hyperbola. And you're going to have a, a large number here and a small number here. And most calculators will give you an error message. Sometimes it'll give you this larger number here. So with this one, we cannot actually calculate uh, NPVs. Uh, let me go back for really quick. Uh, another thing, uh, if they are independent, which means we can choose both, uh, it's really simple as long as all three are positive, we pick. So independent NPV, IRR, or mutually uh, MIR are fine. If we have an issue here, we cannot calculate. We have to calculate the MIRR, and how is it calculated? It's a simple calculation. We take all the negatives and we discount them back at the capital cost of capital. We take all the positives. We find the future value of them, all of them. So it's kind of a net future value, if you will. And this would be a net PV, if you will, of the negatives, the negatives and the positives. And then we just find a rate of change between this X number, whatever it is, and this Y number. And when I say rate, I mean the actual rate function in Excel. It's also referred to as the geometric rate. So it'll give a rate. It'll be less than generally the IRR, and it takes into consideration the reinvestment cost. So if I have to choose between the IRR and the MIRR, I generally choose the MIRR as my decision-making uh, tool for this. So I hope this video helps understanding a little bit of the issues with the NPV IRR, especially with crossover rates.